Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, I'm going to go over the dev update that happened last week with Ross. And yes, I am late. Yes, that's just how it goes as life gets in the way. But big thanks to Apogee on the Outreach HPG subreddit as he made a wonderful summary that I used to take notes on and uh, am looking at it right now to... Uh, remind myself of what my answers were for the various questions, or at least the various topics that were brought up. In the background, you'll probably see me playing some matches on my free-to-play account, but let's get into this. So first off is the rumor that uh, Microsoft will do Mech Assault 3, and they're going to announce that soon. Um, personally, I don't care, mainly because I've never had an Xbox, and I've never played any of the Mech Assault titles, so I've never gotten into them. If Microsoft is making more Battletech games, that's good, because it means there's more interest in Battletech, Microsoft thinks that the IP has value, and you can be like, hey, you want to, like, Mech Assault is more action, like, arcade style, you want more of a sim style, try Mech 5, sort of thing, which is a, a great thing to be able to do. Um, but personally, never played them. If they come out on PC, I'll give them a try. But as it is, I don't care. Uh, on to mech packs. Uh, it's been a year since the last mech pack that was a good return on investment. Um, they're saying this is unsurprising since the game has been around for seven years and people have a lot of mechs. Therefore, we're sort of oversaturated. People are being more s selective of what they uh, purchase because they want, you know, hey, I've already got mechs that can do X, Y, and Z. So why do I need to buy another one? Why do I need to spend the money? And that their next pack won't be in June, which is when I'm making this video because I'm late, and that it will have a very special and defined role. So, of course, there's a bunch of speculation on that. Ooh, a special mech. What they have not done before? IS Omnis. Ooh, I wonder if that will happen. There's a whole bunch of speculation that can be done about that. Um, but yeah, let's uh, go over the points on this. Uh, it's very interesting for me to hear that it's been that long without a good ROI, return on investment. Because I thought things like the Warhammer 2C would do better than that, since it's a, it's a good mech, and it's powerful, and I see a fair amount of them on the battlefield. But then again, I can think about things like the Hatamoto Chi. Like, I, I can't think of off the top of my head last time I saw one of those. So... Like, that's the kind of thing that probably isn't giving them their good return on investment. Those mechs are just not getting purchased and not getting played because they're not, you know, we've already got mechs that can do their roles and stuff. <sighs> but when it comes to mech packs, if they don't want to put a bunch of time and effort into creating a brand new mech, we already have a lot of mechs in the game that don't have packs. And there's, there's no way to purchase them for that way. So why not repack old mechs into new packages? Like, I already did a video on this a little while ago when I was talking about different options for the store, where you could take, say, for, for example, the Catapult. You can't purchase the Catapult in a mech pack form. But all you need to do is take a single variant of the Catapult, for example, the C1, you do a single camo pattern on it to make a um, special uh, collector's pack version of it. You set up a web page, put some art on there, some banners, set up the, the purchasing, and there you go. You have a brand new mech pack with just the time it took your web guys to do their thing and your artists to do one camo. I mean, it's not going to, it may not bring you a bunch of income. But it's a really low investment, and you have a lot of mechs that can do that. You have old packs that are uh, languishing, either not even on the store, like the Phoenix mechs. You just can't buy a Battlemaster, so bring that option back. Or you have mech packs that are stuck in their large pack format, like the initial wave of clans and stuff like that. So if you break those mechs out of there, it'd be really easy for me if it's like, oh, you're getting into the game, you really like this kind of mech, 
get a Hellbringer pack because it would be amazing. Yeah, get the collector's Hellbringer. You don't need anything else beyond that. And then, bam, you have essentially three quarters of a drop deck that you can take into faction play and it's really powerful. Give us those kind of packs so that we can recommend them to new P new players as that is a great way to purchase into the game. Yeah, just get that one pack. Beyond that, why is there no, I mean, you always have sales, but why is there no incremental price decreases? I've always harped on the fact that it's been $70. It's been just adding them up. There's no discount. There's no additional incentive for getting collector, like to, to get the ultimate over getting all the individual bits of collector's hero and reinforcements separately. Like, why is that still $70? It's a full triple A game. It's so annoying. I personally think that after, say, a mech pack has been on the store for a certain amount of months, it should go down in price. And but even that, why don't we just lower all the packs prices a little bit to start with? We have them currently at the 20 for standard, 40 for collectors, 15, 15 for reinforcement hero, and a total of 70. That's a standard pack. Let's take them all and put them at light mech prices because the light mechs are slightly cheaper. They are 15 for standard, 30 for collectors, 10 for hero, 10 for reinforcements, 50 for total. What if you instead did 15, 30, 10, 10, and 45? $45 for an ultimate pack is a little more bearable than 70. It would be essentially what the old collector's pack was. Yeah, you know, lower your prices down. Maybe it's a bit too much. Maybe I'm being crazy. I don't know what the back-end economics of that is. But if you say to someone, 45 bucks, which is like a game that's been on Steam for like a year and a bit, and it's been knocked down a little bit on its price, and or it's a brand new game that's got like 30% off, yeah, it's a good, it's a, it's a deal where $70 for in-game content, oh, it's a little too much because I don't want to buy it because I could just go buy the latest whatever game for like $9 more because it's like $79. So make it more micro transaction than macro transaction for these. Along with that, why are things that are very, very restrictive, so restricted? If I buy a bolt-on, it is a bolt-on for a particular mech. If I get a bolt-on, like, angel wings thing for my bushwhacker, I can only use it on bushwhackers. Why? It's so restrictive. On things like Warframe, if I buy an armor piece, I can use it on every single frame. I can mix and match it. I can do whatever. I don't buy an armor piece on Frost. Prime or something like that, and I can only use it on Frost, and I have to buy different copies of it for my different frames. No, because they want you to go and get every single frame, and you want to get every single um, cosmetic, and you want to switch it around and do all sorts of crazy stuff, and fashion frame. That's their thing. Why can't we do that here with being able to put any bolt-on on any mech we ever own? Like, as far as I understand, it's just a mounting point system. You just define where the mounting point is, and you align the bolt-on onto that mounting point, and then save it. Like, I know that's a very, like, super basic way of saying it, but it's essentially what you're doing. It's not like you're going in, well, of course, I'll get to camel specs here in a second, but it's not like you're going in and manually painting the mech and placing where all the camos are and all that kind of stuff. You know, that's a lot of work. I can understand that to a degree. But for bolt-ons, it's just a mounting point system, as far as I can tell. If I'm completely wrong on that, please tell me so I can correct myself. But they should be so that if you get a bolt-on, you can use it anywhere. Now, I'm not saying let people use infinite copies of them, of course. Make it so that if I want angel wings or something on two mechs, I have to buy two of them. That's fine. But 
make it so that I don't have to buy angel wings on my bushwhackers and then on any other chassis I want to put it on, I can't take it off my bushwhackers and put it on my hellbringers. I have to buy it specifically on hellbringers and then I can never leave hellbringers ever again. That's so restrictive. Please, if I could do that with boltons and have them spread around, I would actually purchase them. I haven't purchased a single bolton the entire time because the system is so bad. Please make things more loosey-goosey, less restrictive, so that I can actually use what I purchase. Uh, similar thing with camo specs. There's no point in unlocking a camo spec for something because why? Just use a one-shot and it's a tenth of the price because if you unlock it, it's just for that chassis. And I might not have more than one of that chassis because I don't need to get three anymore to fully master my mechs. So why? Let me just get an unlock. I don't care if you increase the price. Like right now they're like, I don't know, a thousand something for an unlock and like 100 something for a, a one shot. If that thousand something was like several thousand, like three or four thousand or five thousand or whatever it is, MC, make it as, I don't know, maybe I'm being a little bit uh, too high here, but I'm just throwing out random numbers. Make it a a significant cost that is representative of the effort that it takes to put all of those camel specs on the various mechs and then just let me buy say polygon like for every single mech i want to buy woodlands for every mech if i could do that and for every single mech i could use any camo pattern that i unlocked i would instantly buy all of them because that would be awesome. I could then outfit my mech with any customization I wanted any time and save all these cool customizations for it. They're just great. But I can't do that right now because goddamn restrictions on it. So make that more Lucy. And the last thing on monetization is why can't I buy things that are currently not monetized? Like, I want to get a different bitching Betty sound, a different command wheel voice, game announcer, HUD designs, weapon sounds, weapon effects. Well, weapon sounds and weapon effects maybe have to be just for your local client because then you don't want to have like, oh, but this one's really hard to see with this setting and stuff like that. So people can be like uh, pay to win and argue about that. So just make them client based. But Holy crap, why can't I get a community member to go in, record some audio, and it could be in my command wheel? I want the beef to say, like, potato spotted or something like that instead of target spotted. Please, make the memes happen. I will buy them. <laughs> Those would be so much fun. StarCraft 2 does different HUD designs. You can have all these crazy effects around your HUD. It does the exact same, but it just looks cool. Even for HUD colors that would be awesome if i could change that around could i buy different crosshairs for the center and customize those why aren't these things mono demonetized like entirely different everything give me give me it i want to buy it because the only thing you can really buy in this game is mechs uh, uh, also uh yes we'll get to subscriptions down below because that was a sort of a different question at a later point uh, also they talked about burnout at this stage where because of the constant quantity of mechs being released it was just too much to get them fully leveled out until the next mech was released and it's just like oh my god i have to keep up with the grind in order to continue keeping up with the mechs that are being released yeah slowing down releases is good because you'll lower that burnout but I have to say that burnout is more of an indication of what our system is in terms of grind instead of the amount of, you know, stuff there. Because it takes so bloody long to level a mech, it seems. Especially if you've got a bunch of them on the go. You play, like, them once a day to get their 2x to, for their win. You don't have premium time because you're a plebeian like my free-to-play account is. And you just are grinding away. 
the real bad part about it is that it literally takes like half of your C bill gain when you're leveling a mech just to earmark it away for skill points. So that means that you're very slowly saving up. You can do practically no loadout experimentation while you're leveling and it just becomes an annoying punitive grind. If you get people with lower skill and therefore get lower earnings in every match, that grind is going to even take even longer. So you have people that are playing these mechs that are not buying skill points because I can't afford them. Just remove the C-bill cost from skill points. I don't care if you take the XP cost and increase it. it if I'm doing the math correctly, I think it's 72,800 XP right now to level a mech to 91 points. I would not care at all if that was increased to like 100,000 or like 120,000. Personally, I know there's other people out there who have different opinions and you're happy to leave your opinion in the comments. But if it didn't have a Seabill cost related to it, I wouldn't care because I could just play the mech and then just earn Seabills and earn XP and get new mechs and experiment with my builds as I'm playing and have more fun playing it. Let us have fun. Let us be space rich in the uh, this time of the game. Moving on from there. So next thing they talked about is MechWarrior Online by itself is not enough to sustain a company of PGI size. Uh, lots of writing on MechWarrior 5. MechWarrior 5 has to be successful to carry on MechWarrior development. Uh, hopefully they'll see many more years and depends on the success of MechWarrior 5. So they did expand the company. They did do a lot of hiring when it comes to Mech 5 because um, it's a bigger game, I would assume. They need more people to be able to do that. So the company that was just purely Mech Online would have been smaller. We don't know if the what would have been a pure Mech Online company could be maintained with the current MechWare Online's revenue. We don't know these numbers, of course, they're not going to share them with us. But they did say that MechWare 5 pre-sales are selling well. So those sold. They got some good numbers out of those. They most likely have outside capital investment in the company. That is, you know, here, we'll give you these dollars to make Mech 5. I don't know. I'm assuming they do. Uh, if they're totally self paying for Mech 5, that's very impressive. Um, but yeah, I believe MechWarrior 5 will be more successful than MechWarrior Online because it's more along the lines of what people like to play. And as a side note, a random fact about me is MechWarrior Online is the only PvP game that I actually play. Every other game I play, it's either single player versus AI or I am in a co-op situation. Like, I love StarCraft, but I only play co-op commanders. I have Warframe because it's only co-op, you know, that kind of thing. Well, Warframe does have PvP, but nobody talks about that. So MechWarrior 5 is actually more my kind of game. So I'll probably play MechWarrior 5 a lot more than MechWarrior Online once it comes out because it'll be more fun for me. Anyway, moving on. On faction play, PGI is committed to the future. Patch was pretty rough. That's an understatement. And they're hot fixing. They did communicate what the feature was on the forums. And the initial release was going to be story mode. Matchmaker will continue to iterate uh, maybe up to six months. And we'll get to a state that everyone's happy with. Some things are off limits as they require too much engineering, too many buckets, etc. Um, I don't think that faction play will ever be in a state that I personally enjoy playing it. Simply because I believe that my ideas of what a fun faction play experience are is directly opposite to what I have heard um, the developers say that they want to go in this direction. I personally would like a very solo, casual, friendly game mode that focuses on objectives and the respawns are there to keep people in the game 
and the, the objectives make us so we spread out and we're not all death balled up, that personally is the funnest for me. The absolute best matches I've ever had in faction play are two situations. There was this one time they did a solo, um, like, like solo, uh, my brain is not functioning, solo queue in faction play. It was only for like a single afternoon and they ditched it because they wasn't getting enough matches. But when that afternoon was occurring, I was playing matches and I got about three in. Oh my God, those were the best games ever because no one was coordinated. Everyone was spreading out to go for different gates at different times. It was glorious. It was really fun to be in this chaotic battlefield. I know a lot of people are going to be like, you enjoy that? Like, what are you, crazy? We want to have these like intense unit versus unit combat situations where we're coordinated and it's like a military and it's great, you know, sort of thing. And I'm like, okay, that's good. We'll play comp. Like, play comp. I don't care about you. I want to just have fun with a respawn game mode. But we have different opinions on that. That's all. And my other time, I enjoyed game... Um, Faction play was freaking Conquest, man. Conquest is the best with respawns. I personally think that Faction play Conquest should be just the default game mode. <laughs> Respawning Conquest. Yeah, it's so much fun. You have to spread out or you lose. It's possible to have massive comebacks when you're down a whole bunch of mechs. You typically win the match before you kill the enemy. Like, sort of thing. You win it on game mode. I've lost matches in faction play based on score, even though we were kicking the enemy's ass on fight. I always like to say this little story. We are on Polar Highlands. I was in a Marauder 2C. We had a bunch of heavies and assaults, and we raffle stomped to the first wave, like 12 to 2 sort of thing. But then they all dropped in lights and started back capping us like crazy, and we couldn't keep up because we were in slow heavies and assaults. We had to eject heavies and assaults because they were just not suited for the situation. What game mode beyond conquest can do that in this game? None. So we need, personally, I think, better game modes. Skirmish is a shit show with respawns because people just camp it. And once you get like, once one wave wins, like you get a 12-2 or something like that in your first push, game's over. You can't come back from that if the enemy team, like, pushes their advantage. There's maps with oppressive sight lines and spawn camping, like Boreal Vault. We need new game modes that benefit from respawning. Like, oh god, something akin to Battlefield's Rush would be so cool. Move, like, out of um, bound zones in with like within the match i have no idea if that's physically possible in the uh crytek engine but have objectives that are locked behind other objectives so that you have to go forward across a map and then you could come in different locations with your drops and stuff like that it'd be so cool have secondary objectives that you can capture and you get oh like there's a radar tower over there that if you just capture it's yours and oh they capture the radar tower let's send a contingent of lights to go take it back sort of thing that's the game mode i want they will never get to that state because that takes way too much engineering so i will never enjoy faction play that was a rant and a half this entire video is a rant and a half moving on uh, they acknowledged concern about the ongoing monetization of MWO. The core customer base has so many mechs, they are less incentive to play more mechs. We kind of already talked about this, but they f they floated the random idea of subscription. Um, they they have a note here from Apogee is that he was just spitballing, which is something that Russ isn't very um, good at when. It comes to things where he'll throw out a random idea that then players will be like, oh my god, that's occurring? And it's like, no, he was just throwing out ideas, but it, it it's not filtered, so some bad feedback from that. Uh, a mandatory subscription model will probably kill this game. Because there'll be too many people that are just like, well, I don't care, and then stop not, and then, then not play. But an entirely optional subscription model might work 
to be clear, optional. Make it like super premium or something like that. The, I know several MMOs that do this kind of thing where you have a base account and it's free to play, go in, play the game as much as you want. You can do everything. However, if you pay per month, you get cosmetics, you get some currency, you get um, like what is effective, pr effectively premium time, but you can make it like super premium time. Um, it would be like instead of, instead of 50%, maybe it's 100%, maybe it's 150%, whatever it is. But if you pay per month, you just get boosted in all these ways. Of course, not pay to win, but you get all these things so that playing the game is actually really easy. So someone who works a lot of the time and only plays, say, like four or five days a month, sort of like, oh yeah, I got my Saturday gaming session. I get to play for four hours. You know, when my kids are off doing some summer camp thing. That's the only time this guy gets to play. He can actually make progress because he pays per month. Make it like that. Entirely optional. That would be fine. I would actually get that on my main account. Just to put my money where my mouth is. But yeah. Entirely optional. Uh, when it comes to Metcon, has gone through a lot of iteration. Last year was a big expense. Um, well, they did say that they were going to try to launch Mech 5 last year, so that didn't work out and so they did a lot of like, essentially like a bigger metcon to be like it's mech 5 2 sort of thing um they had the pods they had all sorts of stuff and that it was a big expense to pi pgi and i thought, thought this was really interesting they're the they are the only financial sponsor which is weird um, but also the ongoing cost of having the on-site world championship and such. Okay, so the other companies didn't help with the cost of Metcon. I mean, Hairbrain Schemes was there, Catalyst, Game Labs, the tabletop area was set up. They had no cost. I mean, they probably did their PGI probably said, here's the space, you get yourself here, sort of thing. Like they didn't pay for Hairbrain to come out they just said you have a space you can pay for having your stuff here i i would see as that is was most likely the situation but these other companies didn't give anything to be part of that space like i i'm sure people like was like tried the tabletop and we're like this is great i'm gonna buy something here sort of thing or i'm gonna go and order the tabletop game when i get home sort of thing they didn't i i, I don't know maybe there's some back deal that they've done there but i kind of feel like that's kind of an the a little sucky like come on guys <laughs> you guys got successful companies you can step up for even just a portion of it it's just hard to imagine pgi took on the cost a hundred percent but that's just me um but personally the only thing i wanted out of metcon is to see people that i normally interact with on the other side of the screen so if you guys want to come out and see me at metcon i want to see you guys i want to shake your hands i want to take selfies with you that's the reason i go to metcon is just to see other mech warriors you gotta play some solaris against people you get some prizes and then i'll like tweet out the prizes that I get or give them away in my discord just be like here's a code you better put it in sort of thing and to watch the main stage for major announcements that's like the entire reason I go because it's pretty easy for me I'm already in BC so it's just a, a quick drive over to Vancouver and there I am but yeah I, I, I personally don't care about the world championships like it's great that the game can have them and that those people can play at that level, and it's a really fun thing to watch. But we don't have to have them on site. If they like, they're saying that the World Championships on site is like a third of the cost of MechCon. That's a lot. So, if you can cut that out and have them be remote, you can really save on the costs there. I would be okay okay with that. 
if they're just up on the screen and you have you still have bandit and stuff like on site um, doing the play by play and the color commentary and all that kind of stuff that's that you just need those guys there the other teams can be online from wherever they are and they can still get their prizes they can still get that stuff i think that would be great um but yeah and uh moving on here uh metcon 2019 uh, december 6th and 7th which i think he misspoke because uh december they've, they've always been on the weekend they've never had them on a friday which at least i'm not mistaken so six and seven is Friday, Saturday. They probably meant seven, eight, which would be a Saturday, Sunday. But it's again, it's around the beginning of December. They've always been around the beginning of December. Um, they've got the convention center booked. Um, but yeah, I will be there, hundred percent. Like the only thing that stopped me from getting to MechCon is getting hit by a bus, and even that might not work because I'll just go in a wheelchair. <laughs> I'll need someone to drive me, but I'll go in a wheelchair there. Uh, come back here and do, 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 do. and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. The last bit of here, there's something on uh, fashion play, uh, positive feedback to the story mode and the matchmaking, which the fact that they actually have a matchmaker in faction play, which is nice. Although I actually, being truthfully honest here, I haven't played a single thing, a single faction play match since the update. I don't care about faction play at the moment, so I haven't seen the effects of this matchmaker to see if it is actually better matches, but I still think the population needs to pick up significantly before the matchmaker can really make good matches without being super lopsided. But the story thing is kind of interesting. And the last note they had here is that the climate for pre-orders, MechWarrior 5 did well, um, critics are acknowledges some critics won't pre-order as they are negative PGIs and people increasing number of field positive. Um, best way to address those critics is just to release a good game. And uh, I think they will, uh, hopefully, because you get a, if you get the modding capability, it's going to be a make or break for this as well. Because if there's good modding capability, it doesn't matter really that much how good the base game is. <laughs> As long as it's solid and it can take mods, we will mod it to be perfect. We'll put all sorts of crazy stuff in it. If they give us a certain amount of mechs, oh, you guarantee we're going to add more. <laughs> we're going to put all the mechs in the game. We're going to have crazy missions in co-op mode. I think it's going to be fun. But yeah, that's the end of it. And I've rambled for far too long. We have a 30-something minute video. So, sorry, you had to listen to me mumble for all this time. 30 minute video for what is three and a half pages of notes for me. Wow. So about a 10 minutes a page for my notes. But that is going to be it for now. Thanks for watching. And good hunting out there, mech warriors.